brought me coffee, Peter, when all I want is a hot mug of your tears. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir de Vite, and today I would like to play some more of your boyfriend. Oh, Peter. Peter, mi amor, I've tried everything. I've tried being nice to you, I've tried being sensible, but you still kill my friends and you still knock me out, kidnap me. I mean, at first, I used my powers for good. I became friends with everyone, I solved all their problems flawlessly, and their companionship was amusing for a while. As time repeated, people proved themselves predictable. What would this person say if I gave them this? What would they do if I said this to them? Once you find the answer, that's it. That's all they are. It all started because I was curious. Curious what would happen if I upset them. I don't, I don't like, like this. this, I told myself. I'm, I'm just, just doing, doing this because, because I have, I have to know, to what, know happens. what happens. <laughs> <laughs> what an excuse. Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. You may call me Veed. You'll notice that Editor Me even got me a lovely blue screen so that I can wear my threads. My Undertale threads. I'm the alter ego that Espoir has created so that she doesn't feel bad about being mean to video game characters. <laughs> oh, Peter. Peter, we meet again. Oh, last time you made me love you. You will not get me, Peter. You will not get me. You but that isn't going to work this time, my dear Peter. My name is Vide. It means void in French. Welcome, Vide. You two have fun. Whoa, hey, take it easy. It's just me. And who do you think you are? Not my boyfriend or anything. Uh, dinner sounds nice. What? No. <laughs> Get. Uh, who do you think you are? You are not my boyfriend. No, you will not take me to dinner, sir. I pull my hand away from his. I thought that I would normally try to at least attempt to be polite when I turned down someone's advance, but the stranger's presumptuousness makes my skin crawl. Oh, I see. I think that I'm getting mixed messages from you. I mean, it doesn't make much sense for you to come here and then not want me. We're here to destroy. Well, no, Peter. I don't want you. In fact, I don't want anybody. <laughs> Your tears mean nothing to me, Peter. Hmm. You've been watching me? <laughs> are you serious? What kind of creep are you? But, but it's not like that. He reaches his hand out towards my shoulder in an attempt to console and calm me down. Not one of his greasy, grubby hands anywhere on me. I flinch away in shock and disgust. I feel nothing, Peter. I don't care if you're gripping that rose so hard that it bleeds. Nope. Nope. No. No. Don't care. Nope. Mm -mm. A surge of irritation floods through me when I hear Lucy's voice. I take a glimpse over at my shoulder towards the deadbeat who wasn't making my life any easier. Yes, I am in a hurry because some of us actually have a job. I mutter under my breath, grabbing my work keys from the kitchen counter and beginning to storm right by her. Again, with the guilt trip. She mutters something else under her breath as she taps her foot angrily. Look, I'm trying, alright? It's kind of sad to know that she actually is trying and she actually is a good person, but I'm mean on this playthrough, Lucy. I'm not having any of your gall, miss, no matter how pretty you are. Oh god, not you again. <laughs> Seriously, what part of leave me alone did you not understand? I bellow out, gaining the attention of the remaining people inside the diner. I hope that calling him out like this would get him to leave. The creeper stiffens up a little, giving a rather hurt expression. You did, and I'm not as thick as I seem to be, honest. The tone in his voice was frantic. 
All I wanted to do was apologize for my behavior yesterday. You didn't even give me a chance to explain myself. Explain yourself? There's no explanation for spying on me every day when you go on your walks. Rolling my eyes, I try my best not to snap at him, speaking now through my teeth. Oh my god, no, alright? I might have overreacted, I might have misinterpreted your intentions, but that does not change the fact that I don't want anything to do with you. It can't be helped, dear. Now last time that line caught me off guard, but I feel nothing, Peter. I know your tricks, I know that you're not actually a cinnamon roll go golf ball. Your shenanigans are tragic and evil. Evil shenanigans. His eyes shift over towards me, an eerie glint in his gaze as he smiles a little, responding to my reply. You're just playing hard to get at this point. <laughs> you serious? I feel nothing. No. You cannot pierce my heart, Peter. You cannot do it this time. And I do love games. Okay, maybe a little bit. Teeny bit. A little bit. No, I don't want to deal with the police right now. I don't want to deal with him or the police or anything. I don't want to talk about this, nor do I want to be bothered with this creep any longer. Hmm... That doesn't seem to be evil enough. Let's try that again. Roses? Seriously? Gee... Thanks. I look at the creepy black ribbon. I wonder if there's a card that reads, To my future murder-suicide. <laughs> Not at all thrilled with the gift as I place it callously on the table in front of him. His face drops and he reaches to take them back. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. If, if you don't like them, I can head out and get you something else. What do you like? Daisies? Sunflowers? Lilies? I fold my arms, annoyed with how pathetic he was being. Come on, you show up late, bring me some roses that look like they came from a funeral home, and I had to buy myself a milkshake while waiting for you? Do you think that some cliché roses are gonna make up for this? His shoulders fall. Holding the roses close to his chest, he mutters awkwardly. I'm so sorry. I'll pay for the milkshake. He is a pathetic little guy, isn't he? He's bending over backwards to try and make it up to me. Wanting to know why he knew about this place, I stir my milkshake and I wait as he fumbles over his thoughts. Oh, uh, I walk by here often. Almost every day, in fact. I catch little glimpses of you through the window whenever you're working, so that's how I know. I mean, I try coming in to see you, but I lose my courage every time. Wow, that's not creepy or anything. He sinks more into his seat. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you. I'll take you out to a nicer place next time, and I'll be more punctual too. I promise. He clutches the roses to his chest as if in prayer. This man is desperate, isn't he? He's acting like a drowning man, mentally paddling to keep his head above water. I reach for my milkshake after my tummy rumbles at me. Less talking, more eating. As the thought of ice cream chilling my parched tongue passes, I think about the empty fridge at the apartment. Nothing in it but ice trays and sauce packets. I could go for a decent meal at a better place. Pulling the soft treat closer to me, I start eating, keeping the creepy man in suspense. I take my time, intentionally ignoring him whenever he tries to start a conversation. Oh, how devilish. It's surprising that he hadn't counted his losses and left already. He must be very desperate to want to make it up to me. I lick the spoon clean, let out a satisfied sigh, and lean back in my seat. Alright, I suppose I could give you a second chance. I mutter, mainly to myself, and lick the bits of cream from the corner of my lips. His posture immediately straightens. Really? You mean it? But you had better be on time, and bring chocolates. Mmm, chocolates. I ordered before standing up from the table. Talking next to him, I pointed to a napkin dispenser on the table. Write your number and I might call you when I've got some spare time. Y yes of course He stutters, snatching a napkin and pulling a pen from his pocket. He quickly writes down his number on the paper before handing it to me. I I'll do better, much better next time. 
Taking the napkin, I look at the number and notice that there's no name on it. You trying to be anonymous or something? I show him the napkin and tap my finger where a name should be. He goes eerily quiet. The uneasy, pathetic expression that he wore turns to pure disgust. My name is a joke, you know. To be honest, I would prefer to go by whatever you prefer to call me. <laughs> what, you hate your name that much? He nods before looking back up to me, squeezing the pen. <laughs> you can call me bite for all I care. That's what I deserve for such a terrible evening. <laughs> we don't name him that. Do not name him that. No. He did have a point. Okay, how about... No, do not. <laughs> do not name him that because then yes. you're going to have to say it throughout the whole video. Do not name him that. All right, all right. I'll name him Peter. Thank you. But you can name him that. You can name him that. And he does respond to it. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I would have to then say that throughout the entire playthrough. And I don't feel like doing that. All right. Your name will not be <laughs> Bite. It will be Peter. He gives a little smile and nods. He writes it down on the fragile bit of disposable paper before handing it back to me. I like that a lot better, really. Just pay for my shake. I roll my eyes before taking my leave. It was getting dark after all, and I didn't like walking home at night. I walk by the waitress and tell her that the guy in the sleeveless hoodie was paying for the shake. She could tell that I was in one of those moods and just shrugged silently. I didn't look back before I left. Ice cold. It was getting cold outside, and I could feel my skin grow goosebumps. Maybe it was the dropping temperature. Or the ice cream cooling me from the inside out. I don't know. I glance back at the diner to make sure that the creep, Peter, wasn't following me. He sat, twisted around in the booth, watching me leave. He waved, but I turned and kept walking. I took a sharp, unusual turn down a road opposite where I live, just in case. It will take more time to circle back and get home, but better safe than sorry. By the time I passed the diner a second time, he was no longer in the booth by the window, but the waitress was cleaning the plates from his table. At least that weirdo enjoyed a meal, my stomach growled bitterly. Next time, I'll make him order me everything on the menu, just out of spite. Man, it's getting cold out. <laughs> Ice cold. Flopping into my bed, face down and limbs out, I let out a long, miserable groan. I take a moment to rest before rolling over onto my back to stare at the ceiling. <sighs> With the napkin in hand, I look at the sloppy handwriting. Giving a scoff, I toss it to the floor by the bed. Meh, I'm not even going to bother with him right now. I have too much to deal with at work tomorrow. That I don't need a whiny creep on my mind. Too tired to even get undressed, I roll over and drift to sleep. That better not be a golf ball-headed string being at my window, Peter! Yeah, no thanks to you, Lucy. I blurt out as I snatch my keys from the counter, glaring over towards my roommate who had the nerve to look confused. Why didn't you wake me up? My deadbeat of a roommate tensed up a little, looking both offended and startled with my sudden outburst. Dude, I heard you rummaging around earlier. Don't pin your lazy butt on me. She tries to explain. Not even her excuses have any effort. The fluffin' bum. I then shake my head, focusing back on my predicament. No, I wasn't rummaging around earlier. I just barely woke up. That was probably Peter, wasn't it? You know I have to work at 7, and you let me sleep in until 9? What kind of stuff were you and your fluff toy snorting up last night, Lucy? My roommate instantly takes offense to this, flashing me the most glorious of birds, before storming off into their room. <laughs> you know what? Fluff you! I am not your keeper, and you are not my fluff and dad! How do you know, Lucy? I could be your father! And I told you not to call me Lucy! Didn't know that part was voiced. 
But haha, -ha, I've successfully made her mad. <laughs> Once my roommate slams her door shut, I simply scoff ah, and made my way out the door. With any luck, she'll be gone when I get back. I hustled down the stairs and out of the apartment building, but after running into Lucy, I slow my pace. I don't like that job anyway. If I get fired, fine. This day is already crappy, so why not just pile it on? Fumbling to tie the apron on, I go to the time clock and don't waste time digging for my time card to punch in. If I'm going to get fired today, I might as well milk it for every minute I'm here. Wait. According to this, I already clocked in. <gasps> TK, don't be nice to me! There you are. Where have you been? I've been covering your shit for the past 45 minutes without the boss even knowing you're not here. TK rushes right by me as they gently place the dishes into the sink of soapy hot water. Wiping their hands, TK sighs loud enough to make sure that I hear it. But I don't care, TK. Hey there, stranger. You know what? I'm... N no. You get no response. No. Mm -mm. You get the coldest of reactions. I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of a reply, crossing my arms as I give him a glare. The silence was growing uncomfortable. For him, anyways. He shifts a little in his seat. I... I just thought I might visit you at work, to make the day a little easier for you. Yeah, well, now just isn't a good time. I've had a crappy morning, and I just can't. I know, but you could use a break, right? I'm sure your friend wouldn't mind. Look, I'm too busy right now, okay? Too busy trying to get fired from this job that I don't like. Once again, he looked away and shook his head. I, I'll get going. Sorry. Go on, get I watch as he gets up from the booth and makes his way out of the diner, not even making eye contact or saying a word as he leaves. Oh. Heading back into the kitchen area, I noticed that TK was looking at me with an intrigued look on their face. What was up with that guy? Your table service that bad? Nah, it was someone who's been pestering me to go out with him. I'm just a little too flustered to deal with him right now. I notice a slight shift in their expression that they tried to cover up. I've kind of known they had a thing for me for a while now. They're probably wondering whether or not I'd give in to Peter's advances. Well, guess what, TK? I'm not being nice to you either. No, no, I'm an equal opportunity hater. There will be no mercy. I'm making everybody mad. You know what? No, I don't want to share. I don't want to share my lunch with you. I'm just going to stare. I'm going to give you the same treatment. I'm gonna stare at you. I don't say anything, leaving my soup untouched. TK frowns at the awkward silence. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work. Yeah, you get out too. You get out too. Lucy comes in here, she can get out too. Don comes in here. He can, he can stay for a little bit. And then he has to go too. They say, walking away without looking back. Guess I won't be getting any more favors from them today. That's okay. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> Evil! Ugh, what a day. For a Sunday, it's fluffing busy. Here I was hoping for a laid-back day. I can't wait to get home and just keel over. Each step is just as agonizing as the last, and the pouting headache certainly isn't helping me. Maybe I'm irritated, or just so self-aware of my surroundings, but I swear it feels like someone's eyes are on me. Better not be. Oh, them eyes are gonna catch these hands. Oh dear. Don's music is playing. No, I must resist. I must resist Mr. Williams. Oh. Ugh. Uh, home sweet home. I'm surprised my feet didn't fall off while making my way here. Reaching into my pocket, I pull out my key, knowing full well that Lucy always locks up each time I leave. I don't see why, though. There you are. Oh! No! I must resist you! I must resist you, Mr. Williams, like I will resist Peter, no! Jesus, what the heck? You can't sneak up on me like that! The old man, unapologically, um, he crosses his arms and he don't care. Why would you be surprised? Today's the deadline for the other half of your rent. The last
Last time I did an ice cold playthrough, I was swooned by Peter, but now I cannot resist Don. No, Don, I will make you mad as well. That voice, though. Judging by his expression, he's having an exhausting day, too. Fine. I'll talk to Lucy about it. Again. I mumble as I finally find the key to the door and try to get inside to avoid another lecture. Actually, I'd prefer if I came inside. Are you done? Okay, yeah, now I'm done. I'm done, Mr. Williams. As I was saying, actually, I'd prefer if I came inside to talk to her about it right now. It wasn't a request. All right, come on in. <laughs> there goes my peace and quiet. Opening the door, I allow the landlord to come in first. He's already scanning the area of our living space, probably to look for any damage or mess that he can charge us extra for. There's an unsettling silence between the both of us as he continues to look around the place. She's not here, is she? I guess not. Lucy is naturally loud, and when she's not, she's smoking things in here that would get us kicked out in a heartbeat. Thankfully, we normally blame her on scented candles. The older man groans and pinches the beard of his nose. I can't keep doing this, and you certainly can't keep up their end of the rent. Listen, you're clearly the more responsible one. She's broken her agreement one too many times. She has to go. You know what? You get the ellipses too. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> The landlord raises his eyebrow, impatiently waiting for my answer. You are aware that I'm on a busy schedule here, right? I have several other appointments to attend to, but I have to have your file cleared by morning, so I need you to make a decision soon. I mean, I could always move in with you, Mr. Williams. <laughs> no, I must not simp! No, this is a no-simping playthrough! <laughs> I still don't say anything. My anxiety is building up at this point. Oh no, it's not anxiety. I'm just being a brat. Look, you can't keep covering for her like this. And what if you can't find another job? On the one hand, Lucy's been laid back since we met and hasn't done anything to contribute towards the rent. Replacing her would lift a weight off my shoulder. On the other hand, if I do kick her out, who am I going to get to take her place? I hardly know anybody else here. It would be awkward to ask total strangers to move in with me. Not to mention, life is already hectic at home. So having one of my family members would bring chaos to this place. Who the heck am I going to get as my new roommate? I need to get back to work. Just have her come by my office if you see her again. He immediately begins to make his way out. His movements are much lighter than usual. I'm surprised. Then he stops turning to look at me over his shoulder. Listen, kid. I know you mean well. I don't. It's refreshing, but you gotta realize that you can only go so far when dealing with crappy people. Thank you for the kind words, Mr. Williams. Too bad they will fall upon death ears. Saying this, he resumes making his way out, closing the door behind him. This honestly surprises me, Seeing his attitude change from grumpy old man to sympathetic proprietor. If I'm not mistaken, I sense he might regret putting me in a difficult position. Oh, cause Don secretly likes you. After a moment of pondering, I pull out my phone as I walk into my bedroom to make a call. I need to make a decision soon. Picking up the scrap of paper off the floor, I look over the number Peter had written down. Eh, might as well call him. With a pushover like him, I'm sure he'll take care of most things around here. Rather than bleed me dry. Besides, I'm sure he'll jump on my offer in a heartbeat. Hello? Simp? Sir? What the heck? The call was coming from inside the house! Okay, what the fluff was that all about? Lucy? Lucy, you home? 
The landlord needs to have a word with you regarding your agreement to this place. Uh. 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 Well, I've been doing nothing this whole playthrough. Continue doing nothing. Ow! Did I get shot? That sounded like a gunshot. What happened? My head. Dear God. Who did this? What's going on? Who's there? What happened? Did I get bashed over the head or did I get shot? I can't see a thing. I feel a hand running down my back, as though to soothe me with long, soft pets. I feel warm breath in my ear. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. Oh, uh, I mean, no! 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 Is... is that... Peter's voice? I try to roll over to get a better look at the bastard in my home, but everything's too dark. Only a black silhouette appears before me. Dawn? What? What did you do? Ah! Well, I'm... I'm back in my room. Uh, my head is pounding. What happened last night? Oh god, that's right. I wasn't alone. The one who attacked me. His voice was just like... Eh, maybe it was a nightmare. It couldn't have been my little pushover Peter. Or could it? Uh, it must have been a nightmare or something. I guess I've been too stressed lately. Who that knocking on my door like the police? Who could that be? Sorry about that. I thought you were someone else. Paranoid enough not to answer the door, huh? No, just not eager to get visitors. The landlord doesn't seem to acknowledge my answer as he crosses his arms and continues. I had a word with Lucy about the termination of her contract. As usual, she didn't take it too well. Neither would I, honestly. The landlord seems a little uneasy as he continues. She, uh, she recently got a job somewhere and wanted to pay you back from all the times you covered her. She did? What did you tell her? The usual thing. Told her to contact any friends or family to stay with for a while. If she proves that she's financially stable enough, I might let her come back. Wow, that was a thing to do. <laughs> Getting a job these days is harder than it used to be, I know. But I don't have the patience to wait for her to use more of her money to bail drug dealers and not on rent. Anyway, if she needs some boxes, have her come to my office. I think I've got a few to spare. Um, sure. Thank you. Great, will do. I muttered, getting ready to close the door. The landlord didn't say anything as he backed away. I was ready for him to interrupt me, or even block the door again, but this time he only stepped away. Are you realizing my negativity power, Don? It's not like him to step away from a serious situation so early. Oh well, less headache for me. Ugh, I don't want to go to work today. I think I'll take my time getting dressed. Maybe a long shower. Oh. Whoa, what happened here? I ask myself, noticing a small crowd of people surrounding the area. Does this mean I'm getting the day off? That'd be swell. Oh, there you are! I've been looking everywhere for you! Oh look, a simp. Oh my god, you had me worried sick! Are you alright? What did they say? If they blame this on you, I swear to god, I'll... Ellipses. Oh yeah, the coffee! I heard about this! <laughs> I'm about to end this man's whole career. I understand. It's not often something big happens at your work, right? It might have been a break-in or something. He guesses, while handing me a coffee, just barely starting to take a sip of his own. Here, I figured you wanted something to drink before work. Yeah, well, looks like that might not be happening. I reply, taking the coffee from him, and popping off the lid to check inside. Did you get my- <laughs> Did you get my usual from Knott's Brew? 
Only the best you deserve. He purrs, standing close and nuzzling the top of my head. Oh yeah, I forgot he's really tall. <sighs> You're pathetic, but thanks. Saying this, I put the lid back on and take a sip before handing it back to him. I'm not in the mood for coffee right now, though. Go ahead and toss it. Peter frowns a little as he takes the cup from me, hesitating to speak at first. B but I figured if you're not going to work, we could go on a walk and... I don't hesitate to snatch my cup from his hand, pulling off the lid and splashing the scalding brew against his chest. You brought me coffee, Peter, when all I want is a hot mug of your tears! <laughs> I said no! I snap at him, throwing the empty cup on the ground. Littering! Peter holds back a yelp as the burning pain sinks through his clothes and into his skin. His eyes shut tight and teeth clench. He takes a step back from me before kneeling down to pick up my cup. And then he picks the cup up? Jeez, Peter! I knew stuff is wrong with you, but what is wrong with you? Yes, darling. I'm sorry. He whimpers with an apology. Some a-holes just don't listen. Uh, bring me, thoughtfully bringing me coffee? Uh, how dare he be considerate? Uh, I watch impatiently at the scene before finally rolling my eyes. Well, I'm heading home. I don't think I'm working today anyways. Probably why TK isn't here yet. Come on, you're walking me home. Sure thing, dear. He mumbles, giving a half-smile as he follows behind me. What an adorable doormat. Opening the door, I walk in and toss my keys on the kitchen counter, looking over towards the pathetic dog following behind. Don't sit on anything. I don't want you getting coffee stains everywhere. I wouldn't dream of it. He responds, pausing for a moment and glaring over towards the sofa. Ugh, she's here. I'm confused for a moment before looking over the same direction. Oh, what's she doing here? My roommate is laying on the sofa, looking a little hungover as she rolls over and gives us both a glare. Shit, neither of you have the common courtesy to be fucking quiet. It she groans, sitting up from the sofa and neatening her hair a bit. Well, some of us have common courtesy to pay rent. I shoot back. That's why I'm having Peter here move in. Lucy doesn't respond at first, her gaze going back and forth between Peter and me before finally speaking. Are you fluffing kidding me? You're kicking me out like a used condom and already have a replacement? Yeah, because he's already set and is willing to pay my share. Willingly. He's not some biscuity leech. You're one to talk, you fluffing manipulator. You only pay for my half just so I can owe you favors. I'm not dumb or a stepping stone so you can look good for the landlord. Hey. Hey, I am not a manipulator. My. Drop dead in a ditch, you maiden of the night. Drop dead in a ditch? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, but it's evil. It is cruel. I am here to make these characters upset. Besides, she called me manipulative. I am not manipulative. I am... Conniving. Perish within the gutter, you maiden of the night. I snap back, storming over to my room and slamming the door shut. I gotta admit, that is a little bit harsh. Stomping over to my bed, I flop down into the mattress face first, groaning loudly in it. Lucy has a lot of nerve speaking to me like that, calling me manipulative, plop my feet back on back on TK and Peter. I'm not manipulative. Me, who's been mothering her for three whole months, and this is how she repays me? Biscuit is so ungrateful. I lay there for a moment, listening to whatever's going on out there. I completely forget that Peter is still in the apartment as well. I waited to hear any heated debate between the two of them, but nothing happened. Lucy probably stormed out the same time I did. Or maybe Peter killed her and put her in his truck and... I don't know. 
I don't know. I stay for a few more minutes, mentally arguing with Lucy in my head with all the things I wanted to say to her face. And to think I actually felt sorry for her this morning. <laughs> Just then, the sound of my bedroom door opens and someone walks in. Hey, Peter. My cute little doormat. Are your coffee stains still moist? Peter comes over and sits down next to me, giving me a weak smile. This place is bringing you down, darling. Why not stay with me for tonight? Help you get your mind off Lucy. Eh, I suppose so. I've never actually seen your place. Darling, trust me. The moment you see it, you won't want to leave. And if you try, I'll have to tie you down and make you stay. Are you joking? You want to find out? Um, sure. I say, with a hesitating tone. I have a gut feeling that this is a bad idea, but after everything that's happened today, I needed a distraction. A smirk curls on Peter's face as he stands up, extending his hand to me and helping me off of the mattress. So bold. I like it. Not bold, more like bored. Buckle up, it's gonna be a long ride. How far? Mmm, about... Three hours? Three hours? I live rather far from here. Just as I like it. But oh, so far away from you, though. That's okay. The gas money is worth seeing you every day. Monsieur? Peter glances towards me with a dark glint in his eyes. Once we get to my place, I'd like to show you how much I've been dying to have you to myself. Uh... Look, I'm sorry for the way I treated you- No, no, I'm not gonna apologize. Who do you think you are? Who the fluff do you think you are? What right do you have to do this? It's in the title, darling. I'm your boyfriend. That's who I am. Dear God, I'm trapped in a van with my stalker. What have I gotten myself into? Oh, look, a knife. Oh yeah, they didn't say anything about the murder because I just dipped and threw coffee on my boyfriend. What's this? Peter doesn't respond simply reaching over to close the glove box back up. It's not important. I wouldn't dwell on it. He bluntly says, How about a little music to relax, hmm? Are you gonna turn on some Hatsune Miku? Saying this, he reaches over and turns on the radio. A song just ends as a news report chimes in. Alicia here, with more development from today's incident at Dad's Darn Diner. Alicia? Isn't that the person who's supposed to be covering for me when I quit? Alicia, do you have two jobs? Earlier this morning, what was thought to be a break-in turned out to be a murder scene. A body had been located inside the kitchen area, locked away in a freezer. Police found multiple stab wo- Peter reaches over and turns off the radio, keeping his focus on the road. Did- Did you kill someone? <sighs> Answer me! Peter sighs. I told you not to dwell on it. Ah! How dare you? How- Go ahead and sleep for the rest of the trip. We'll be home soon. You monster. I am supposed to be the monster, but you, how dare you? I mean, I did throw scalding hot coffee upon his person, but how dare you? Uh, fine. I never liked her anyway. She called me manipulative. I agree, setting my stuff on the table. The landlord simply nods before he starts to make his way towards the door. You do realize you'll need to go on a hunt for roommates, right? Oh, mailed. He's right. Biting my lip, I give him a nod, thinking about a solution to my problem. I know, I know, it won't be a problem. As a matter of fact, I think I already have someone in mind. Oh, well, look at you. Already on top of things. Don, you gotta stop saying stuff that I'm going to take the wrong way, because there'd be a, there's, there's a lot of things I would like to be on top of. <laughs> Did I mention this game is made for an 18-plus audience? His tone of voice is anything but impressed with me being willing to replace my roommate. Anyways, when Lucy gets back, have her come to my office and we'll start the termination of her contract. Okay, Mr. Williams. 
After a moment of pondering, I pull out my phone as I walk into my bedroom to make a call. Peter! You better not be in my house already! Why is that call coming from in the, inside the house? Why does it sound like you tried to quickly muffle it? Just come out the room with a bat? What the heck? Ow. I don't know what that sound is supposed to be, but it gives me a headache. Oh god, you had me worried sick. Are you alright? What did they say? If they blame this on you, I swear to god I'll- Hey Peter, where's my coffees? <laughs> we need to have a talk. Oh yeah, you didn't get to choose if, uh, did Peter actually knock me out or was it something else? There's so many subtle differences that can branch off into s different things. I say in a firm tone. A talk? He asks with confusion. Why? What did I do? You know darn well what you did! I say, tucking on his shirt and guiding Peter over across the street and near an alley, finally letting go and glaring at him. Listen here, you little poop. Actually, you you very, very tall poop. You knocked me out last night. Why? Peter looks surprised with this, not knowing how to respond at first as he tries to mouth out some kind of excuse. M me? I didn't knock you out. I was back at my place after you went back to work yesterday. Swore in my mom's grave, if she was dead. Sure would be nice if she was. Peter. I cross my arms, showing that I'm not buying this bullcrap excuse. Sorry, I didn't want you freaking out that I was there, so I panicked. And you just happened to carry chloroform with you when you came over? Yes? Stop being cute! I mean, that's not cute, but that's pretty cute. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? We're done. We're done. No, we're done, Zoe. I say, bluntly, not even looking into his eyes as I storm past him. Maybe this would put this dog in his place. W wait He nearly calls out and grabs onto my arm, pulling me back and gripping both my shoulders as he was nearly on his knees. Let go of me! I hiss, yanking myself away from him. His reaction was becoming a little too pathetic for my taste. Don't you get it? I can't. Haven't you been paying attention to what's been going on? Can't you pick up the slightest of hints that I'm meant to be with you? The fluff are you talking about? Peter's grip on me moves down to my waist, the man now completely on his knees. He nuzzles his head against my chest and hums. Oh, Veed, don't you get it? I'm opening up my heart to you. I'm being forward. I'm being honest. Trust matters in a relationship, and I'm tired of keeping things from you. Peter steps closer, his hands resting on the wall behind me. I love you. I loved you the moment I saw you at that diner. I wanted nothing more than to storm in and... Consummate our pre-marriage. Letting them know that you belong to me and I to you. Though that wasn't a proper way to approach you. At this point, V just gets a chair out of nowhere and smacks him with it. God, I could fuck you against this wall right now. Light work, no reaction. No reaction, Peter. I know your games. Plus, my heart belongs to Don now. You will not seduce me! You might seduce Espoir, but not me! Hey now, slow down. Slow your roll, honey. I'm the, the manipulative person in this playthrough. If this was going to work, he's got to know to follow my lead. I try to push him off, but he makes a soft moan at my touch. I just want to do some wonderfully awful things to your body. Can you blame me? I sigh. I don't know what I'm more disgusted with. The confessions of his stalker-like behavior and what he's done to me in my sleep? Or the realization that I find these actions of his arousing? Look, nothing serious is going on between us. You just happen to meet some of my needs, okay? Peter just smiles. Not what I was expecting, and the lack of a negative reaction is scary. You don't think I know that? I know you're just using me. But I'd gladly be a doormat for you if it means I could feel your heels digging into my back. Okay. My body shivers upon hearing these words. Never before have I encountered someone who was so willing to be dragged through the dirt without hesitation, 
Not even TK was this willing. I'll be over later tonight, darling. He kisses the top of my head and turns away to leave. I take a moment to mull over what just happened. A strange mixture of emotions are all brewing inside me. Ones I'm not fully sure how to process. Hello? My phone vibrates in my pocket. I check to see the caller ID. It's TK. There was too much on my mind to try to converse with them today. Maybe if I keep the conversation short, they won't notice anything crazy is going on. They're pretty perceptive when it comes to me. Clearing my throat, I hope my confidence will deter them from digging deeper. What? I snapped. TK doesn't catch my biscuity tone as they continue, not even being phased. Dang it. Hey, Veed. Work is cancelled. Apparently someone broke into the dino overnight, but I'm not getting much else from the cops. I figured I'd give you a heads up just in case you're running late again. Gee, thanks for the confidence. I feel like a valued co-worker. I don't know why someone would want to break into that crap hole, but I don't really care either. I'm happy to get a day off. I just hang up on TK. Hopefully they'll back off and leave me alone. If not, I'll just ghost them. Like a monster. I stuff my phone into my pocket and start heading back to my apartment. I can't wait to just fall into bed. I open the door to see Lucy lounging on the couch. Typical. I toss my keys on the counter and shut the door. Lucy stirs, grumbling and rubbing her eyes. Can't be quiet, huh? Not my fault you have a hangover. Just like it's not a meanie manager's problem that you don't have a job. Lucy glared and sat up. Ooh, you mad? You mad, Lulu? You big mad? Full of pee and vinegar today, are we? Why are you back so early? Break in at the diner. Fluff knows why anyone would want to break into that heck hole. But here I am. Which means that I won't be able to work until further notice. Lucy just stared at me, blankly. That's sucky. What are you gonna do? First things first, you need to pack your things. Lucy's expression went from weary to PO'd in zero to sixty. <laughs> Why? Can't wait to see me on the streets? The way you behave, it's the only home you deserve. You fornicating woman of many partners. I can't believe I was stupid enough to think you were looking for work instead of getting wasted and fluffing anything that moves. Lucy jumped to her feet. I have I have an inkling that Lucy could just beat me up if she wanted to. <laughs> she could she could probably throw hands as well as Don could. What the fluff is wrong with you? I'm dressed as Kara from Undertale and doing a No Mercy playthrough. What the fluff is wrong with you? <laughs> you don't think I've been beating myself up every day feeling like a gosh darn failure for not being able to find anywhere that'll hire me? You think I like not having $100 to my name? That every night I don't hear my fluffing dad's voice in my head telling me I'm a fluffing worthless female dog? Oh, I don't want to say that. You left me no choice. I'll be slightly nicer as a treat. I had to work my buns off just to keep the heat off of you. You should be more grateful for my sacrifices. Lucy just gives an irritated huff. I see I'm not appreciated here. I can take a hint. She snatches her coat and storms out of the apartment. She slams the door and I can hear her angrily stomping down the stairwell. She's so fluffing selfish. It's not all about her. Angry beyond reason. I sit on the couch. She'll be back eventually for her things. Maybe I should just throw her crap out on the street. What? Ugh, I'm not in the mood for company. Why are they knocking so hard? Maybe if I stay quiet, they'll assume no one's here. Oh, for heck's sake. Lifting my head up, I get up on my feet and storm over to who had the nerve to just walk in. Oh! Oh, Mr. Williams, never mind. I take back everything I just said. <laughs> I, th I thought it was going to be Peter. 
I don't like being ignored, kid. Uh, f you just can't walk into other people's apartments like that. You almost gave me a heart attack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you need a heart to have that. <laughs> Don Williams 1 V0. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Besides, I own this place. You're just renting the space out. You are the cold-hearted one, Don. It probably wasn't a good idea to argue with the landlord, of all people. What do you want? I muttered. Oh, so it was more like, what do you want? This is the second time he's bothered me today. Well, besides the fact that someone recently got murdered at your work, and how Lucy stormed off the way she did, I figured I might check in and see what the heck is going on with you. Wait, what? There was no murder. The landlord looked at me with a pinch of confusion, though probably not surprised. I take it you don't like your job enough to pay attention, huh? I work in food services. What's there to like? I agree with that. Fair enough. But yeah, someone was found in the freezer and was stabbed a few times. They thought it was a break-in at first, but no such luck. Was it TK? Jeez, really? Maybe it was a robbery gone wrong. Doubt it. Nothing was stolen. Wow, that's weird. Do you know who it was? Don's right here. Lucy just went out the door. Was it TK? Why would he go after TK? No, my kid knows better than to give that information out early. Your kid? Is he a journalist? A police officer. He was the first to show up at the diner this morning. But you're doing all right in terms of what happened at work. It's a day off that's long overdue, so I'm not distraught or anything over it. Seems kind of harsh, don't you think? What seems harsh? Looking behind the landlord, I see Peter sticking his head into the doorway, looking curious about the conversation as he walks in. Oh, hey Peter. I muttered. Is everything alright? He asks, walking up to me and taking my hand. Excuse me, Vita and I were talking. I know, and now Vita and I are talking. Bombastic side eye. I could see that the landlord was starting to get tensed. His posture straightened as though to look down on Peter even more. I wonder which one of those guys is taller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need these two doing a... Rooster off. Right now. Uh... Uh, let's talk about this later, sir. I said in a somewhat softer tone, knowing that snapping at him will only make things worse. How about I stop by tomorrow? We can finish another time. He stood there for a moment, looking between Peter and I before letting off a huff from his lungs. All right, tomorrow. And tell your stick figure of a date here to mind his mouth, or he's not allowed in the building. He'll mind his manners, won't you? I nudged Peter while saying this, hinting the tall man to be careful about how he treats the landlord. The landlord can take a knife to the back, but he won't take back talk from anyone. Funny you should phrase it that way. The, the landlord can take a knife to the back. Peter, how exactly did you take him down then? Anything for you, darling. He cooed, taking my hand and nuzzling his cheek against mine. Oh no! No! <laughs> Don left the room like, ugh, freaks, the both of them. As I turned my attention towards the landlord, the man had already taken his leave. I only caught a glimpse of a scowl towards Peter as he left. I needed a break, I swear. With a deep sigh, I stumbled my way to the sofa and sat myself down, wanting nothing more than to take a nap. Peter comes over and sits down next to me, giving me a weak smile. This place is bringing you down, darling. Why not stay with me for tonight? Help to get your mind off things. Eh, I suppose so. Saves me from having to see Lucy again later. I never actually saw your place. Darling, trust me. The moment you see it, you won't want to leave. And if you try, I'll have to cut off your legs. What? Nothing! Buckle up. It's gonna be a three hour long ride. What? Three hours? Jeez, that's kind of pathetic. 
You drive three hours just to see me? <laughs> Simp. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, I'm aware. But do I look like the kind of guy who has any self-esteem? Alright, yeah, he does have a point there. Oh, look, a knife! Who got killed? What's this? Who did you kill? Was it TK? Peter doesn't respond, simply reaching over to close the glove box back up. It's not important. He bluntly says, Wait, was... Was it you? Was what me? Someone was killed at the diner today. Was it you? Peter! Answer me! Yes. He had it coming, though. Oh my god! He's a fluffing lunatic! Why? You still don't get it. If I'm willing to drive three hours to see you every day, what makes you think I wouldn't kill for you either? I watched as you struggled with- Oh! Oh! I watched as you struggled with the rush yesterday, mapped the faces of those who yelled at you, threatened you, threw food at you for the pettiest of reasons. I followed the worst of all, made sure they were local. He cried like a female dog as I dragged him into the diner, reminded him of how he hurt you, how he didn't even deserve to live on the same lump of dirt as you. Peter gives a sinister grin as he reminisces with absolute pleasure. Oh, so he just killed some rando? <gasps> I found the best playthrough. I found the, I've, I found the best ending. Evil is the way to go. Nobody dies. Everyone's alive. Everyone's happy. Mostly. <laughs> ah, the fear in his eyes was beautiful. Getting rid of such filth for you is a sensation I will never grow bored of. I honestly wish you were there to see it, darling. Try to jump out of the van. Get the knife. Well, I mean... What happens if I don't do anything? So, you killed for me. Of course. That bothers you, doesn't it? I don't know. I muttered, curling up in my seat as I look out the window. Get some sleep. We'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? I could only nod, watching the world I once knew be left behind. It was bad enough I was stuck with this psycho, a murderer who killed for me. But now, I felt a lack of guilt for what he did, and who he did it to. I mean, he did have it coming, after all. <laughs> Best playthrough! Best ending! Nobody died! And we're accepting of Peter's murder! <laughs> Ah, evil is the way to go. Nobody died, and Peter doesn't bash your face against a window. Evil! Cruelty! Making video game characters upset! Well, I hope you enjoyed today's playthrough. If you have something to say about it, please leave it in the comments for Espoir to read. Well, thank you, Veed, for doing that for me. Um, I'm just gonna get my seat back now. What? No, I'm doing the outro. <laughs> what? No, Veed, you are not doing my outro. Veed, you are not doing my- Wait, wait! <laughs> well, I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed our little adventure into evilness. But anyway, as Espoir would say, um, have a great night, take care of yourself, and remember there is always hope. <laughs> well, here's what I have to say. Don't be afraid to be mean to video game characters. <laughs> <laughs>